Mm, mm, mm. Wow, this is one of the best sessions you've ever had. You probably prepared all week for this. Actually, I prepared it an hour before we started because I forgot. Oh, getting a hint of creativity, originality. I just based it all off Lord of the Rings. Oh. What's in here anyway? Just a ton of other people's ideas that I found on a subreddit and threw it into my campaign. Oh. Oh. Good day. Good day. DM, look what I found! What? Um, you've got something on your face. Um, everywhere. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, I wonder why, dipshit. What do you want? Uh, so me and the bard were outside of a cave, and, um, I had to take a massive shit. Uh, so I went into a gigantic cave, and, um, I pooped on something, and it, uh, threw me out. Cave. It threw you out of the cave. What's strong enough to throw you? Uh, it was something called, uh, what did the bard say? Uh, Terrasec? Uh, a Terrasque? Where is it? Oh, uh, I ate it. Uh, wait, what? Anxiety attack. You, you ate a Tarrasque? Uh, am I not supposed to? What is wrong with you? Uh, nothing. I was hungry, and, I don't know, they scared the poop out of me. <laughs> Literally. How did you eat a Tarrasque? I cut its head off and ate it over a fire. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Because, you big dummy, you are just so nonchalantly saying, oh, I ate a Tarrasque. Do you know what that is? I have no idea what it was. It tasted really nice. And I might go do it again when the mom comes back. I mean, sure, it's taste. When the what gets back? Uh when the mom or the dad comes back? Why you give me such a weird look? You... You ate... a baby... Tarrasque? And you lived? Yeah. We left, and then... we saw two really big things flying in the sky going toward the direction where we were, but... We didn't really fucking care because we were going to go get drunk at a tavern. So you're telling me there's a mother and a father Tarrasque out there with your scent. Full of rage because you ate their child. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. We're fucked. get into a bit of trouble, did we, adventurer? <laughs> I heard what you did to that tyrant lord. You, my friend, are on top of his list. Perhaps I can interest you in the Rogwood special? Oh, it's my way of asking if you'd like the room near the back door, and if I need to lie to any unexpected guests that might try and visit you later on in the evening. Eight gold a night, five for the room, one for the line, two for the resident cleric, should your unexpected guest decide to test my patience. <laughs> Splendid. Explain rogues. Kinky with a side of daddy issues. And if you're not making fun of them, I wasn't. They're sneaky, skillful, and love leather. Oh, like Black Widow. You mean the kinky spy with daddy issues? Oh my god, you're right. I know, but they're good at what they do. What, at having a tragic backstory? Funny, but no, they're masters of intel, stealth, and devastating blows. I bet they are. It's called sneak attack. If they surprise a foe or aid a friend, they do some serious damage. Some like it rough. And with a thief, assassin, or trickster subclasses, they only get rougher. Now, do my parents have to be dead? If that's what you're into, the thief has quick hands, quick feet, and a quick mind. Get in, get out. That's what she said. Now assassins strike hard, wear disguises, and get into places they shouldn't be. Aggressive, fake, and ignores boundaries. Sounds like a bad dom. Someone with a chain wallet just got very upset. 
Finally, there's the arcane trickster, magic and mischief. So you're Loki. All the fuckery, none of the godhood. Can I still tell people to kneel before me? Sure, if it's consensual. All jokes aside. He's still unconscious. <laughs> Nobody's killed him. Skaldi can go up and, and um, in fact, she doesn't want to use a spell slot, so she's just going to kind of be like, he just needs time to rest. We should probably take a few moments here. Okay. Can't want to use a spell slot. How fucking kind. <laughs> <laughs> You're not dying. <laughs> and she's got, like, two left. There's a big bad woman with Yeah, there's this mask. thing called managing your resources <laughs> that some people know about. Okay, okay. Unlike Mr. Spell Slots! <laughs> <laughs> That's uh... That's a gift right there. Uh, <laughs> ah, evening adventurer. Welcome home. You have a question. Well, I have an answer. How many adventurers do I ship together? Enemies to lovers? Friends to lovers, love triangle, fake love. Which pairing would you like to look at first? We don't talk about that one. time to say goodbye now she goes over to where there is a hatch like a, an opening which leads out onto the little gangway that leads up into the ship kind of hits a button it kind of you hear like a and she just looks lets his body go and you just see this little imp body float and tumble out into it <laughs> she <laughs> takes it back up what hits is the windscreen what are you guys? <laughs> Rhiannon, <laughs> Rhiannon. <laughs> He's like, gone. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wondered what the difference between shows like High Rollers and perhaps some of the more emotive actory shows that you've seen, <laughs> we laugh when NPCs die. We don't usually, but I mean, I don't know what triggered that What's there. What's wrong with Rhiannon, you? Rhiannon, <laughs> please enlighten me. I just got the vanilla image of this little red guy just floating through his face. It's like, oh, that's around. exactly what happens. Yeah. I don't know why I found that so funny. It just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, Talia, oh. Talia shuts the door behind her. Oh, sorry, Ben. Um, <laughs> Talia shuts the door behind her. <laughs> looks around. Unbelievable. 
I better get back to you. Okay, he's a villain. Good traits to give to your D&D characters. Being intimidating. Hey, hey! Stop it. Being open-minded. Join me and we can rule this world together. You son of a gun. I'm in. Having a non-traumatic backstory. This kind of sucks. Exploding on command. Okay, okay, I think we lost him. Excuse me. Ah! And being unexpected. Hey! What? And they all fell to their knees and begged that drift and begged him please as he raised his fist before he spoke. I am the righteous hand of God, and I am the devil that you forgot. Scene. Yeah. You're right. No, I'm good. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Can we go back to digital where like I no. can just click off their faces no. when they're crying? No. We spent a lot of money on this studio. <laughs> they're you bringing me down here. Look at you, you know, just everybody should take a, a, a leaf from Chris Trot's book. Oh Look fuck it. off! Compose. He's usually the worst. <laughs> Look at that. myself. <laughs> Did you see that? I <laughs> said. Slapped himself in the face. So dumb. I just full on chin with yeah. <laughs> I can't! I can't win this today! Oh my god! Keep it together, everybody. Oh, the sun's and are you sexually active? No, I'm not. The patient is not. Okay, go ahead and roll initiative for me. Why should people care about Mac DeMarco? Why should they care? I don't know. You don't have to. But if you feel like it, I'm uh, right here with open arms. up a song about Coraline. She's a peach, she's a doll, she's a pal of mine. Six easy ways to make yourself taller. We've told a story of the coming of a time of darkness. Coming of calamity, of shadow and fire and ruin. Why do we tell stories? To try to make sense of a world that can be terrifying and enormous. In Exandria, I don't know that your story will long be known. I don't know who will remain to tell it, but it did happen, and it did matter. And though Calamity is here because of you, it will not be here forever. Thanks so much for watching. Can I tell you a joke? No, you cannot tell me a joke. Please. I am tired. Please. I'm trying to cook. Please. You know what? No, no. If the joke isn't funny, I'm hitting you in the head with the pan. Deal. Go. Why is dark spelled with a K and not a Z? Why? Because you can't see in the dark. Get it?
Monks are basically war criminals. How so? They're every stereotypical kung fu movie wrapped into one Jackie Chan adventure episode. I loved that show. Yeah, now imagine Jackie and Uncle fighting with set in Game of Thrones. That does sound bad. Just wait till they harness their key and can deflect, dodge, or stun anything you throw at them. I can see that getting annoying. It does. And we haven't even covered their subclass options. Yeah, it says here you got three types of monasteries you can train at. What are those? Douchebag factories. It determines the flavor of kung fu nonsense you get up to. You seem upset. Why would it be upset when way of the open hand monks can steal an enemy's turn, heal themselves, or stop someone's heart from across the world? That does sound kind of awesome. Why stop there? Way of the shadow monks can teleport through darkness, cast spells, and turn invisible. So they're ninjas? No, they're nightmares. Kind of like way of the four elements channeling the avatar and dishing out a potential 40 damage at level 3. I always thought Aang's attacks probably killed those people. Yeah, nobody wants to admit it, but... Harry Potter, I've learned a new spell. Alakazam, Alakaziki, don't need a wand, cause I found a blicky! Thank you, Your Honor. This matter is before the International Criminal Court of Fantastical War Crimes. Would you please state your full name for the record? Deception Jack? Yeah, that doesn't work here. Jalen Watersong, level 15 bar. Mr. Waterbed, this court charges you with 15 counts of- Charge me with whatever you want, Hansel. I'm married. Yeah, your right hand doesn't count. Counts? 15 counts? of compelling prisoners of war through use of such spells as charm person. I'm charm. Sue me. Yes, that's what's happening. Modify memory. I think we all have nights that we'd rather forget. Not with me, though. And irresistible dance. How do you plead? Well, if it's against the law to sing a song worth dancing to to some pretty boys in uniform, then It I... is when those men are forced to dance on some train tracks. Well, the real crime was their dancing anyway. Although I could show you how to dance. Are you actually if... trying to seduce me? Persuasion check? No! Well, what will it take for us to get out of here? You cannot charm your way out of a war crime trial. <laughs> I've done worse. Oh, you have, have you? Like, what? You mentioned some train tracks? Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Open the door or I'm going to throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. Uh, 13, sorry mate, that's gonna miss, uh, Trot. Okay. Hello there, Traveller. Welcome to Quincy's Tavern. My name is Quincy. What can I get you? Mm. Deal. Here you are, Captain. Your mega pint. Make a wish. I'm just the thing. Whoa, 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 whoa! Put the chair down! Coco, get him! Yeah. Deliver this for me across town. Now, half later. Just mix all these together, and light it on fire, you got a bomb. Hey, stop it! Get some help. Alright, Coco, more fan mail for you, as usual. Between you and me, with all the chaos and the joy here, there's no place I'd rather be. just rolled 1,000 natural 20. This is a challenge no one has done before. Also, my wife told me to do it, so I did. The challenge started off great with rolling four nat ones before I got my first nat 20. Then after an hour of rolling, we got our first noise. An hour and a half in, we rolled our first 100 nat 20s! 200 came along after over two and a half hours. I then rolled for three and a half more hours before I finally made it halfway to 500. Yeah, at this point, I was struggling. I was tired, hungry, and looked slightly dead inside. But since that was nothing new, I kept rolling. I suddenly got this burst of inspiration and rolled 800 in just under 9 hours. But then we lost the battle and rolled 1,000 nat 1s before the nat 20s. So I threw it back and kept on going. We finally reached 900, 950, the 999. This is it. All we need is one more nat 20 and the challenge is complete. We had over 2,000 people watching this finale and after 10 hours and 20 minutes, the last natural 20 was rolled. Ah! Ah! You can't just magically make me feel better! Well, gee willikers, maybe you can! Uh, hello sir, welcome to Starbucks, what can I get for you? Yeah, can I get a motherfucking, uh... <laughs> 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 so 
Oh, we don't stop here with you. Okay, so I'm teaching a class today for winter session at Princeton, and this is Einstein's classroom. Like, Einstein taught here. <laughs> what am I teaching in Einstein's classroom? Dungeons and Dragons. I feel like this is what he wanted. Lucius's aura is a little off. Do you know I have crystals for this? <laughs> for you. Would you like some crystals? Are they colourful? Yes, of course. I think Peridot would restore your energy. No, this eye is just <laughs> narrow. Like, she, oh, I'm using rocks for crystal healing. Come on now. I also do my own particular style of healing slav. Which solve, sorry. Which is <laughs> sorry. it's very it's that quite good. It's 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 stronger than a normal <laughs> potion. <laughs> but it takes a bit more time to apply. Ooh. Paimon can smell fisherman's toast. How do you describe a druid? Think Beast Boy if he controlled plants. Is it weird I had a thing for Raven? I think we all did. Goth girls are great. But back to druids. So animals and nature magic? Yeah, and depending on subclass, you get better at one of those. Yeah, it says land and moon are the options. Circle of land, the Darwin of casters, they gain magic abilities based on where they're from. We're from Kansas. Then you probably gain resistance to alcohol and Wizard of Oz jokes. Okay, and a circle of moon, a werewolf? Not quite, but you do gain combat wild shape. Combat what? Wild shape's a druid's ability to turn into animals. Combat wild shape's your fast pass to the scary ones. What are the scary ones? Lions. Tigers, bears. I hate you. So land is your magic has an accent and moon is the graphic and National Geographic. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. You know, frankly, I think I totally get these guys. But like, just in case you're having any trouble, why don't you tell me? For the past few weeks, I've been hard at work on a homebrew class called The Medicus. It's a doctor-themed, intelligence-based arcane healer that has roots in necromancy. I knew that I was going to have to make a few homebrew spells to flesh out its spell list, but thanks to some ambitious design decisions, it was way more than a few. I have written nearly 70 spells in the past two weeks, and I'm not done yet. Very close, but not done. I had to make a spreadsheet to track my progress. So yeah, that's why I haven't been posting. I'm hoping to share some of these spells soon and the whole class eventually. Hey there, stranger. Couldn't help but notice that you'd wandered onto my property. <laughs> I just want to let you know that you're welcome here and that you're safe. All right, bye-bye now. Want to use Reinhardt from Overwatch's kit in D&D? Let's get some stats for you. Reinhardt's plate armor gives you an AC of 19, makes your size large, and gives you an ability called Reinhardt's Charge. As an action, you may rocket forward in a 60-foot line. Everyone in this line must make a dexterity saving throw DC 15. On a failed save, the first target affected moves with you up to the total 60 feet. If you impact into a wall or obstacle with this creature along for the ride, they and the surface impacted into take 6d6 bludgeoning damage. 
damage. You take half of that damage. Additionally, any other creatures in the 60-foot line that fail their deck saving throw take half of that damage and are pushed five feet to the side. Reinhardt's shield requires two hands, but its energy field extends to a length of 15 feet and a height of 10 feet as a bonus action. Everyone behind this shield gains total cover and light obscurement. The shield has a hit point total of 30 and an AC of 5. When it is reduced to zero hit points, it shatters and regains 5 HP at the end of each of your turns while inactive. Reinhardt's hammer is a plus one masterwork maul, deals 4d6 bludgeoning damage, and requires a strength score of 18 to wield. All of these pieces combined will have you screaming, COME OUT AND FACE ME! All right, let's see how this works. I'm actually really excited to try this. I'm glad they got the filter working for everyone. Azamar. Barbarian. Interesting. Holy shit! Good lord, overpowered motherfucker. Like, he is not smart, but... Damn! I can fly. I can fly into a rage. And I can fly into your heart. This is an interesting character. I, I might... I might have to tell my DM about this. Hmm. Have a nice day. Hey bro, can I please borrow some dice? He forgot his dice again. No way, man. You're always taking my dice. You gotta stop bringing your own. Oh, please. You're the only one here that actually has left-handed dice. That's why I always remember to bring my own dice, because left-handed dice are hard to come by. Ow. <laughs> some friend. At least you're a good companion. I'm not your fucking companion. Come on, man, I'll give him back. That's what you said last time. Ask the DM. Can't ask the DM, man. You know she's a big baby about this stuff. Well, that's what he gets for being dumb and left-handed. All right, pal, fucking cool, all right? I'm not your fucking pal. I got some dice you can use. He's left-handed. Likely one of us will have to spend some days alone. So I saw this, and the first thing that my brain came up with was, I wonder what it would be like to create a character who was like a year away from passing away so that once it got to part way in the story they just got worse and worse until and this is what my brain chooses to think of when I'm just about to sleep oh god I mean I'm curious but oh god should I play a paladin? Was your family loud or religious? Yeah, why? Then you probably have enough trauma to play a paladin. A lot to unpack there, but okay, give me the rundown. Imagine a holy fighter who's hellbent on justice. Like Sailor Moon. Weird pull, but yes, this is a magical girl class. They can heal the sick, detect evil, and swear an oath for power. Oath to who? Depends on the oath. Each one offers different powers. Well, what's the best one? Well, oath of devotion or your holy knights, truth, justice, and magic. Sounds like Wonder Woman. Sounds like you got a thing for chicks and spandex. Next up, Oath of the Ancients, aka the Fey Knights, Nature Powers and Fuckery. I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. That movie should be a horror film. Finally, Oath of Vengeance, aka the Dark Knights, Edge Lord so angsty it somehow makes them powerful. So we have Wonder Woman, the Lorax, and now Batman? DC will do anything to compete with Marvel. Yeah, except write a good script. Hurtful but true. So, in your honest opinion. Let's see who ruined my life. <laughs> oh, look at that. It was me. Hello there, Professor. It's good to see you again. Welcome back to Quincy's. What can I get for you today? Yes, actually. It arrived for you this morning. It's in the back. Let me go fetch it. And here we have it. Straight from the Nimbus Broom Racing Company themselves. I'd like to present to you with the Nimbus 2000. Light, sleek, Aerodynamic turns on a dime, mahogany wood handle, gold filigree in the front, willow tree sticks in the back, hex proof. <laughs> There's nothing like it on the market. Any Quidditch player would love to get their hands on one of these, but we both know Nimbus. Next year they'll probably come up with an even better and faster one. <laughs> so tell me, Professor, is he really that good? Wonderful. Let me wrap this up for you. Alrighty, here you are, and your other order also came in this morning. One time, Tanner. Always a pleasure, Professor McGonagall. You stay back there. Healing spell! Ah! Healing spell! Ah, 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 ah! Healing spell! Just let me die, Brian! 
Dear brown skin boy, I hope you know that there's iron in your veins. It was gifted to you from ancestors who wore chains around their wrists, and when freedom finally rang, they buried it into the ground in which one day you would be born from. I hope you always know that all freedom comes at a cost. Dear brown skin boy, I hope you know that your complexion is not a coffin. It is a home in which one day you will learn to love the way that your skin glistens in the sun. You see, I hope you know the history of everyone that has come before you and the legacy that you hold inside of your hands. Dear black boy, I hope you know that this body is yours, but don't ever forget the legacy of people who came before it.